We heard Lindsay was going to be picked in the A grade, so I sent his father to the Oval to tell them not to pick him, and they promised they would not do so without our permission. And when it came over the air that he had been picked, I immediately started to cry. When Lindsay came home from the pictures and said, what are you crying for, Mum? I said, you've been picked in the A grade. And he said, well, don't cry, Mum. I'll only get one game. It's doubtful whether his mother really believed Lindsay's reassuring words on that Thursday evening 17 years ago. For even at that stage, there were those who had glimpsed, recognised and rejoiced at the fast-flowering genius of young Lindsay Head. How does a man who has won an MBE and three McGurry medals approach his 300th league game? For all league players, each week requires a maximum of mental and physical dedication to the following Saturday's match. Lindsay recognises this need and achieves it, despite a round of daily activities that would cause most men to flinch. I was always interested in horses from a very young boy. I always wanted a pony of my own, but we lived in a crowded suburb and this was impossible. The first time that I became actively interested in, in horses was um, when I was playing for West Torrens. Um, the trotting trainer, Reg Robinson, was a supporter of the West Torrens Football Club and he had several of the boys go down and drive trotters in work and we became very interested in, in trotting in particular. And from this, I went on about two years later to lease Mayfield Scott, who is the mother of my gal Sal, and uh, a full sister to my gal Sal. And uh, I have had a very happy association with trots ever since. I don't know a great deal about horse training, but I have had a fair amount of experience in training of, of a footballer and a football team and we try to work the horses along the same lines as far as a footballer would be concerned with plenty of variety in the training, plenty of hard work and good hard feed. Leverton Oval, the Eagle's Nest and wherever you look constant evidence of Lindsay's stature within the club. His name prominent on the honour rolls both for football and cricket achievements. His photograph in the committee room beside that of Alf Roberts, Jim Coverled, Ron Ashby and Bob Hank. The Lindsay Head Foyer. Everywhere acknowledgement of the Eagles' affection, respect and gratitude for their most distinguished son. Like the great Bob Hank, Lindsay has become a legend within his own football lifetime and West Torrens shows its pride in him at every opportunity. What do Lindsay's opponents over the years have to say about him? I've stood against Lindsay and definitely he would be amongst the top bracket of any footballer I've ever stood, that's right throughout Australia. And full credit to Lindsay for his 300th game and uh, any young player coming on, if they like to mould their game, Lindsay is certainly an example for the game. I've stood Lindsay quite a few times and played against him over a period of 10 years or 12 years and um, he's possibly the most brilliant ball handler I've ever seen. It doesn't seem that long ago, looking back, to remember his first appearance at the Only Over when I visited him and his mother and father in the kitchen at Thurbiton to wish him well and uh, more or less to tell his mother not to worry about him that he wouldn't be too young at that time. Let's now watch film from an early game as another distinguished West Torrens player, Bob Hank, talks about Lindsay's game. A young curly-headed boy used to come onto the Thabit Noble back in about 1948. Players of those particular days noticed this lad, mainly because not uh, his curly hair perhaps, but that he was a, a brilliant kick for one so small. It turned out that this particular schoolboy was none other than none other than Lindsay Head.
means you already had gone into state with a schoolboy team. And it was some three or four years later that he made his mark on the, in our particular cult side, the junior cults, and made such an impression there that uh, he was immediately promoted to the senior cults. In fact, it was because that uh, he was so classy in the cults that we decided that uh, we would give him a go, uh, although he was only at tender years, and I think possibly second or third youngest to ever play league football, uh, we felt that he was uh, good enough to come into our league side. And it was only in his second game, I, I can recall, uh, played at um, on the Kensington Oval that uh, Lindsay, uh, from a roving position, kicked seven goals in that particular game and, uh, and made a tremendous impression, not only on the uh, West Torrens fans, of course, but uh, on all football followers at that particular time. His game was based on uh, fleet of foot and quick thinking with a liberal proportion of deception and uh, I think this particular style of Lindsay's was uh, something that had to be seen to be believed and although he was quite often criticised for not going in, trading bumps and getting into the thick of stuff, I always felt that uh, had he done this that uh, he would never have been the footballer that he was. It always appeared to me that uh, a game of football to Lindsay was a battle of wits. Not a physical game, but a real battle of wits. And uh, I've often likened him to the uh, to Oliver Twist, mate, in Charles Dickens' book, The Artful Dodger. It's, uh, it seemed that uh, he always had something up his sleeve. He'd uh, uh, real deception. He'd show the ball to the opponents and dodge and weave and balk. And uh, naturally, he often uh, raised the ire of opposition because of the fact that uh, he sometimes made them look silly with his, with his tremendous dodging and uh, deceptiveness. Opponent on the field and teammate of interstate matches, Don Lindner, has stood Lindsay on many occasions. Many a time we've set players the task of trying to stop Lindsay head at all costs and his record shows that this still hasn't been achieved, he's still playing as well as ever. The barracker on the mound is usually pretty hard to please, but most of the ones we interviewed seem to agree in principle when we asked them what they thought of Lindsay Head. Well, I think he's the greatest football we've ever produced and he's got the records on the board to prove it. I think he's a fantastic player. I think he's one of the best players South Australia's ever produced even though I don't bow it for a particular team. Well, Lindsay Head's a very good team man, and he's always been very good for Torrance, and I think he's still got a lot more years ahead of him yet. I think he's terrific. He's the best player that's ever played for Torrance, I think so. Now, I follow this side to today's the Iron Marsh Oval, and I think this Lindsay is the finest footballer that I have seen since Bob Hank. And he's a real good football player. You've got he's a champion. He's done everything that um, that a football player could do. And I reckon um, he should be the captain of um, Torrens because he's a real good football player. A coach's warm-up speech generally has a big bearing on on a match. Um, I've been through the mill over, a many, over many years and I've seen contrast as far as coaches are concerned. Uh, for example, John Burt is a very diplomatic, uh, softly spoken coach who, who uh, emphasises the skills in football. The reason for uh, a bit of equipment and so forth, I don't want you to take any notice of this at all. Just give me your strict attention. I think that for a bloke who played 300 games with any team, Deserves a bit of a hand. Who's got a big job to do today? And every one of you guys has got a big job to do too. And I'm sure each and every one of you players are going to rise to the occasion against West Adelaide. And give us a little bit more than you've given in any game that we've played so far this year. You realise how important this game is to win. We know we can beat them. 
but let's not be too complacent. This is the part of the game, uh, the day when you generally get keyed up about a game. There's plenty of nervous tension and the coach's address brings this all to a climax. On the Saturday morning you, you generally give a lot of thought to the game. You walk around home with butterflies in your belly uh, and you are thinking about the team you are playing and the particular player that you have to stand. And this coach's address really brings all this to a climax. Before a game, I like to relax as much as possible. I like to get to the Oval around about half past one, uh, have a good rub down before a game. And quite often, laying on the table, people would think you're asleep. But you're ever conscious that there's a job to be done and there's a player to be beaten. Sometimes you are equal to this task, sometimes you're not. But in, at all times you give your very best. Sometimes it's just not good enough. Without any doubt in my mind, there's one player out there that means winning or losing. If this player gets on top, if this player goes the way he's been playing, then we could get done. Lindsay, you're on an over day. You're on a boat who I reckon you can kill. Every player here is going to give you all the backing up to the hill. We know you'll give a 100% effort. We picked the team on Thursday night. After we picked the team, we had a lot of people pat us on the back and said we've done the right thing. We had a lot of people say to us, you've done the wrong thing. Lindsay Head can't beat Robert Day. They say that Lindsay Head is too old to beat Robert Day. I don't believe this for a minute. They also said that he won't check Robert Day enough and Robert Day will get more hard kicks. Lindsay, I know that you'll go out there today with a determination to beat Robert Day. We're not a word. You know how to beat him. You beat him and you set us right on the way to success. Billy, you've got no worries with Wiedemann. The way you play, you can eat him alive. Jimmy, they tell me Russians are the future state player. If he's a future state player, I'll go and eat my hat. You show how good he really is out there today. Joey, you can help him too and you can really give him something. Look, last time we beat this mob, fellas, they had every excuse in the world. They said we were too fit at that stage of the year, which was absolute rubbish. They said that they had some players from their side that weren't geared up yet for league football. Anything to make an excuse. Last night I heard an excuse. They've got six players in their side that have got something on their lungs. Just an excuse, fellas. They can see the writing on the wall. There's nothing really that they're going to have an excuse for when we knock them off tonight. I've looked forward to this game for eight weeks, so have you. Don't let me disappoint about it. Now, come on. <laughs> A lot of people have asked me the question over the last couple of years whether it's been much harder to continue training and, and get yourself up for a football season. I feel that um, it hasn't been really hard. Uh, the thing about it is that you need to have the will to want to play. And if, if you want to play, well, it, become, it, bec it stays easy for you. If you don't want to play, uh, it becomes very hard. I can remember when I first started to play football, I was very enthusiastic and I couldn't get out to training quick enough on a Tuesday and a Thursday night and I was leaving some of my football on the training track. I was training very hard, say on a Thursday night and on a Saturday I was feeling a little bit flat. Um, Bob Hank came up with a solution and told me that I shouldn't get out to practice on a Thursday night till about half past five and train for about half an hour. I did this and had marked results. Over the last few years I've found that it's been more essential to train very hard on a Tuesday night and perhaps an hour on a Thursday night to fit you for a game of a Saturday. But I think the whole thing boils down to that you, whether you want to play and whether you're enthusiastic enough to, to um, concentrate and go to practice and, and train as hard as you possibly can on a Thursday night to come up for the for the hard games. I feel that um, the thing that has become a little bit harder are the knocks. Um, it, it, it's a lot harder to, to um, when you cop a knock these days, it takes two or three days for, it to, for you to get over them, whereas when you were younger, they would have come out a lot earlier. Over the years, Lindsay's continued ability to elude an opponent and find open ground in which to operate has enabled him always to place the ball to the very best advantage. For one so brilliantly individual in style, his play always reflects the epitome of creative, constructive teamwork. He is, and has always been, firstly an eagle, and secondly, Lindsay Head.
How does the eagle fly at 33 years of age? Not badly. This was the Sturt West Torrens game of 10 days ago. The Cross Keys Hotel on Port Wakefield Road, Cavan, is home to Lindsay, his wife Jill, their two children, and Jason the dog. We had two little girls, Cherie, nine, who is a very accomplished basketballer, and Shana, who is now two. Lindsay has worked very hard and put a great deal of time and effort into his football career. It is time consuming, but we've had so many advantages through it that the good far outweighs the bad. I have always looked at it this way. There are too many years when he won't be able to play football to begrudge him the few years that he can. We became engaged the day Lindsay was presented with his second medal. We've been married for 10 years now and football has always been a part of our life together. We've had so many thrilling moments connected with football. We've had our disappointments too. But what wonderful memories we will have on which to look back. It's had very little effect whatsoever. I think the most exciting part about it was keeping it secret for the two months that we knew about it and nobody else did. At first we received letters addressed to Lindsay, Head, MBE, Esquire, etc. But we, we don't receive those anymore. Uh, I think perhaps the McGarry medals had more effect than the MBE. Lindsay Head was quite at home receiving his 1963 McGarry medal before 42,000 applauding footy fans. He'd been through it all twice before. In 1955 at the tender age of 19 and then three years later when as West Torrens vice-captain, he collected the state's most coveted football award for the second time. But not all the moments in Lindsay Head's career have been so full of fulfillment, as were these at the Adelaide Oval. I've had my highlights in, in, in my football career, but I've also had uh, disappointments too. And the most disappointing thing to me was the time that I was reported for threatening an umpire um, my side of it was that, that I told the umpire that he was the worst umpire I'd ever seen and that uh, he'd better tune in to, to the television the next day and I'd tell him all about it. Well, I, I got one match for, for this and, and uh, it was a very, very disappointing uh, day for me, but there was more to come. The, the, next, the next week I played um, at Unley Oval and I was reported again for, for striking. Um, the player that I, that I was alleged to have struck came up and said that I didn't do it and that he was only reeling back, um, appealing for a free. Um, and this is, this is actually what did happen. Um, out of it all, I feel that I was the victim of some sort of conspiracy that, that, that caught up on me and I, this, this to me was the most disappointing part of my football career. What does the future hold for Lindsay Head? As far as my foot, uh, football future is concerned, um, it is up in the air at the moment. I'm taking it actually week by week. Um, I had never thought that, that I would be in line to play 300 games, but now that I am, I'm very, very proud and very pleased um, about it. As far as uh, playing on for the rest of the season. Uh, this will depend on my form and whether I can be an acquisition to the side or not. As far as uh, any future years are concerned, this will depend on, on fitness and form and, and, uh, and I, I, I would certainly like 
to finish on a good note rather than that, and, and this will have a large bearing in any decision that I make as far as my football future is concerned. A great team man in football, Lindsay flourishes as a vital link in another team effort. And this time the star is a three years old pacer, Michael Sal, and the game is different. As owner of South Australia's star, three years old Philly, Lindsay heads a trio that seems destined to leave its mark in the trotting world. Trainer Bob Harding and rainsman Johnny Walters are the other two members of the group and they click well together. The feeling I had the night that my gal Sal won her first race was almost like the feeling I had the night that the West Tyrone side had won the 1953 Premiership. It's a wonderful feeling sitting behind a pacer when it's doing fast work. I get a terrific thrill out of it and it's one of the most thrilling experiences that, that I have had. I also do a lot of thinking um, when I'm training the horses. Lots of mornings you just jog around slowly around the track and it gives you a lot of time to sit down and think about football, about business and about trotting. Wavell Showgrounds, Friday night, and this is where all those hours of hard, sometimes tedious work around the stables, beach and training track either bring reward or disappointment. For Lindsay and her team, things are going very nicely. Lindsay and Bob naturally become a little nervous. Uh, perhaps they don't show this uh, outside, but when it comes to harnessing the horse up, the two of them harness the horse up, I stand on the side, and uh, they go around and around the horse two or three times, one checking the other, so making sure that, that everything's all set uh, before she goes out onto the track before a race. I like to keep my instructions to the driver uh, of one of my horses as briefly as possible because if anything happens, then the onus is on him. As I'm handed the reins, I receive one set of instructions and that is to go out and win, and if you don't win, don't come back. It's always a big thrill to have a winner at the trots, but Sally's win was a wonderful thing for us because we raced her mother, Mayfield Scott, and Sally was the first foal, and she is very, very much one of the family, and the whole family was tickled pink. Only time will tell whether Lindsay Head goes on to shatter yet more records. A great football career is not yet at an end. And so let us just say on this occasion, from all of us privileged enough to have witnessed your magic, good luck and thank you, Lindsay Head.